Hi, this is Scott Bradfield. This is the latest episode of Reading Great Books in the Bathtub. And I sometimes go a few weeks without doing one of these lectures. That doesn't mean I'm not reading in the bathtub. So even if you don't hear from me, for weeks at a time, I am still reading in the bathtub almost every day. And over the past several months, one of the we have a series of sort of kind of challenges in the course of these lectures, one of which is to read all of John Barth's novels up to letters. That's one, one of the plans I sort of sort of half formulated. Another half formulated plan is to read Brian Moore and William Trevor's novels backwards. So we've read the last three novels by each of these great novelists, and now we're going to work our way backwards through their, their, their long careers as novelists. Uh, the other one is to read the complete um, Simenon Maigret novels, which are coming out from Penguin in the, at the clip of about one or two a month. Now, this is an extraordinary uh, uh, endeavor by Penguin Paperbacks. They are reissuing these novels, which were published originally. I'll show you a couple random ones here by Hamish Hamilton and Penguin back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s primarily. And the old May Gray novels were perfectly good translations to my mind when I read them. And yet it turned out that at least one of the translators, I won't mention who, uh, was kind of notoriously uh, undependable and actually used to make up names and do sorts of stuff with the, his translations. So Penguin is, is sort of kind of reclaiming all of these old Maigret novels, which are, are pretty fascinating, and there's about 80-plus of them. I've done a talk on Simenon in a previous lecture way back at the beginning, but I've been basically reading through. I'm up around, I think I'm up around the 20th or third, 20, the, I'm in the 20s, of rereading these these seminars, and they've published forty or fifty of them. They're um, they're new translations. They're kind of lovely editions, and it's interesting to read them in sequence. Uh, one of the things that's interesting with a serious a serial character like Maigret, he's basically Simenon's detective. He works at the, the for the he's an inspector for the French uh, police in Paris. And uh, he basically is not a, he's not a Sherlock Holmes. He doesn't sit around reading clues and solving crimes so much as going into kind of social situations and reading the people that are in the situation and understanding why the crime c occurred. His interest is not who done it, really, as why done it. That's, I think that's a sermon online. He's more like, he's sort of a little like uh, Columbo. Those old shows I used to watch as a kid where Columbo becomes friends with the murderer and likes the murderer from the beginning and wants to kind of figure the guy out and needs to trap the guy and figure the guy out. But he already knows who the murderer is. Uh, Magritte doesn't always know who the murderer is, but he comes into the situation and gets to know all the people in the, in the world. Um, reading them in sequence is interesting because what I found was most fascinating was that the first 10 to 20 Maigrets aren't as good as the later ones. They really get better in the 50s, 1950s. Actually, well after uh, Simon tries to end the Maigret series, he actually retires Maigret sometime in the 40s and then just sort of brings him back. doesn't even mention that he left retirement. He just goes back to writing these, these novels. Simon would write 6 to 10 of these a year. They were very. They were almost like one-handed uh, piano pieces. They don't use the whole keyboard like his Roman Duras. Simonon wrote these so-called hard novels, the serious thriller novels, which are brilliant and really wind you up. And Simonon claimed they wound him up. They got him quite stressed out because he put himself in the situation of his characters. Maigret is the opposite. Maigret is a man with a wife. He doesn't sleep around. Most of Simenon's uh, uh, hard thrillers are about men who, who get disentangled from their, their stable lives and get threatened by this, this wider world of other women and drugs and money. Maigret is very, very stable. He has his wife. He goes home all the time. He has dinner three times, pretty much three times a day with his wife. They go to the movies every Wednesday or something. And... He's, he's intrigued by the people who commit crimes and the people who have lots of affairs and lots of women running around, but he's basically this kind of very stable, boring man, very unlike Simonon, who, as you may know, 
lived a quite flamboyant life, adventurous life, socially adventurous. Now, the last batch I've read, I've sort of started, what, what am I, I'm in the 50s now, and what's interesting about the books from the 50s, and I'm, let's take it, I start this whole, this last little tranche of, of novels, starts with May Gray's Memoirs, which is originally published, um, do I have my glasses here? May Gray's Memoirs was published in 1951. And what's interesting with the series character is as the series goes on, he's looking for different ways to open up the books. And Maigret's memoirs is an interesting kind of shift in which we actually have the real Maigret tell his own story. And while telling his story, he talks about this annoying Seminon character who comes around making up thrillers for the, for the publishing scene. And it's a sort of a fun little takeoff on, on the notion of the, the writer inventing thrillers and making life sound more interesting than they really are. After that, we move into a series of probably some of the best books I've read by Seminon. Um, there's May Gray at Picrat's really good example of the May Gray best uh, structured novels. It starts off with a woman who's a, basically a stripper in a, in a club, this sort of seedy club that Simonon liked to hang out in as a person. And it's the sort of place where May Gray would not hang out as a person. But May Gray's charm is that as soon as he meets the people who run this, this place, this woman who, who works as a stripper, uh, goes to the police, she gets drunk, she tries to turn in somebody she claims she heard over she overheard committing planning a murder, and she gets murdered. And the prep the whole setup of the book is to bring Megra into this world of strippers and the people who run the clubs and some a woman who is murdered. And he basically just starts to hang around the bar and gets to know the owner and the, the kind of shady owner who's always sleeping with the girls he works with and sitting around drinking and he likes sitting around hanging out there. And it's him starting to suss out who, who in this world, how they live, why they live there, why this victim is involved there in the first place. And it's a really good little good novel, one of the better of the Simonon novels. Um, we have Maigre Lonion and the Gangsters. There's a secondary character, a very minor character named Lonion, who I think that name means something like hard done by, somebody who always feels like they're badly treated. And Maigre doesn't think, Maigre is just kind of a steady guy, but Lonion is always feeling sorry for himself. And this kind of loser, sad sack uh, inspector stumbles onto a crime. And the premise of this book is that several American gangsters, Chicago style guys with guns who are ready to shoot everybody, who are much more violent than the people that, that Maigre usually deals with, have come into Paris. And with them have come the FBI. And the FBI treats May Gray and his, his cops like the children. And so the whole little story is about May Gray trying to show that they can deal with these, these assholes too and, and put them away. And it's a really nice little, little set piece. All of these are nice little set pieces. Um, May Gray and the Tall Woman, again, another excellent Simonon May Gray, where uh, the premise is that a... Uh, a woman comes to May Gray because he knows her boyfriend. He arrested her boyfriend once, and her boyfriend has witnessed a murder. And she wants May Gray to help her. And she becomes this very uh, significant character in the book in which she's always showing up at getting in May Gray's hair, and then he starts to become um, interested. He likes her. And he finds her interesting. He, he finds her, her, crim her, her burglar boyfriend interesting, too, and he helps him eventually. My favorite of my favorite May Gray I've read in probably the past six months, May Gray takes a room. Perfect example of how the May Gray novels work. One of May Gray's uh, inspectors gets shot while he's staking out a rooming house in Paris. And he gets shot and taken to the hospital. And May Gray moves into his wife is away. And he doesn't know what to do with himself. There's a wonderful opening chapter where May Gray is wandering around the streets because his wife isn't, a, isn't around, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. So he's quite happy for the opportunity to go stay and stake out this, this cheap boarding house in Paris, and he gets to know all the people again, and how they and what their, their habits are, what the habits are of the people across the way, and who does what. And as he understands their lives and the habitual routines they go through every day, he sort of figures out who 
where the crime was committed and by whom, roughly. And that's how he finds his way to the end of the book. It's a lovely, really perfect example of the Simenon style in terms of the Maigret novels. It's a very comforting, they're very comforting novels. He never, he never cheats. He never, he never plays or, uh, games with the reader. There's no clever super endings in the best Maigrets. The first ten, the first ten of these, I think he was trying to be Agatha Christie. He was trying to set up locked room mysteries and things that just don't fit for Maigret. And he's really coming into his own in the fifties with the, this great s sweep of Maigret novels. He's also doing something which was very surprising to me. The first 10 books of Maigret, first 15 Maigret novels, don't really take place in Paris. Maigret is always going out of town. He's always going to Holland. He's going somewhere. You know, he goes to America in one of them. And now that, now that the Maigrets have settled down and, Maigret, and Simenon and his life sort of settle down a bit more in Paris, he uses the, the Parisian landscape so well and the types of clubs and, and places people hang out in restaurants. And again, they're very comforting novels. They're not really violent. They're not whodunits. You're not trying to be real clever and figure out the clues or anything. You're simply meeting these sort of characters. And Simenon and Maigret is usually fond of most of them. So uh, you're, you're, they have a very, very special comfort factor as far as any sort of occurring character goes. Um, but they also have a literary quality. And that is, most of the characters are fairly honest, they're fairly clearly drawn, narrative scenes are really crisply handled, there's no uh, super guy with a gun, there's no super serial killers, there's no over-the-top uh, narrative gimmicks in any of the May Grays, and that's really the pleasure of them. So I really always recommend Simenon, not simply just to read, but for writers, because he never cheats you, he never plays games on you. All right, so um, I'm gonna, we're going to move on to a pale fire now. We're going to do a real tough one. All right. Uh, this, we've had our comfort food, and now we're going to move on to the real, the real tough guy, which is P uh, Pale Fire by Nabokov in the next episode. Bye.